are here with our invigorator interview. And today's interviewee is Tyree Moore, hey, who is the, the founder of Soul Track Outdoor. Outdoors, Ooh. sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he's going to talk to us about how he came up with this vision, how he made it happen, and how that is adding excitement and fulfillment to his life. So, hi, Terry. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are nice you? to see you. Likewise. Um, so, tell us, first of all, what was the moment or the thing, the time in your life that made you first come up with this idea? I want to say the moment where I first came up with the idea around Soul Track Outdoors was maybe around this time, a little earlier, maybe March of last year, um, I was in a position um, at work that I, I was really comfortable in, but I felt very stagnant. Um, I was like, oh, you know, I feel like I've mastered what it is that I was doing at the time. Uh, I was happy, but just feeling like how much more of an impact that I can have on my community. Um, I was very involved with like youth development and just trying to increase like, in outdoor engagement with like the students that I was working with. And I was doing that for quite some time and just wanting to figure out how I could take it to the next level and like really push myself to child, like be more challenged um, in my regular, my regular life um, beyond what it is that I was doing. I had like got really accustomed to like the everyday routine of like what the work that I was doing and just like trying to figure out something else to do. Which is interesting because I feel like that's the majority mm -hmm. of us, right? Like we get to a point in life where you're, oh, okay, I'm comfortable, I'm good, I have this. And I think a lot of human nature yeah. response to that is to stay in that yeah, because that's exactly. safe. Mm -hmm. And so actually one of the reasons why I chose you and one of the reasons I'm doing this is because I get really excited by those mm -hmm. people that look at their situation and say, everything's good, everything's right. fine. But doesn't that kind of mean I should start moving again? Right. Doesn't that mean mm -hmm. that I could be doing more or something different? Why don't I change this up and like mm -hmm. not be stagnant? So that's exciting to yeah. me, people that think that mm -hmm. way, that are like, oh, actually, yeah. let me jump into something else. Mm -hmm. So when you first thought of Soul Track Outdoors, mm -hmm. did you talk to anybody about it before you made it a reality? Or did you kind of work to make it happen? And then... Um, so I have, when I first came up with the idea... It was very unclear exactly what it was going to be. It started out like very co collegiate focused. So I wanted to work with college students specifically and sl slowly evolved as I talked to um, a couple of my closest like confidants, like really close friends or people that I really looked up to and made a lot of phone calls to mentors, people that were in the field that were doing like really great work um, and just, just trying to gauge the needs and like the different market that I was like trying to go into. And I think I was... I was really comfortable with like presenting the idea to people just because I had put a lot of time, my personal life, like my life is a testament to like the work that I wanted to do. Right. And so, um, I think anyone that I went to what like naturally I'm took surprised. it very seriously. Yeah, yeah. They were like, okay, this sounds like a natural progression and what it is that you want to be doing. Um, and so, uh, I have, I went to people that I thought were behind me that like would support what it is that I wanted to do. And, um, I think that those people were extremely supportive, offered so many advice. I think a lot of my peers, on the other hand, was like, oh, okay, like, I think we live, understandably, we live in an age where there's a lot of entrepreneurship, there's a lot of people wanting to start new things, mm -hmm. and understandably, people are like, okay, so like, now. we'll see it, yeah, we'll see it when it happens, yeah. and I, I look at that as a challenge, like, okay, cool, like, I, I know that I'm going to put it in the work, yeah. I'm going to make it happen, so, you know, it was just a matter of like, okay, Tyree, this is a sign that you really have to follow through on what, what it is that you're saying. So yeah. uh, you get a mix of both. You get the people that are really behind you immediately, and then you have the people that you have to prove yourself to. And I think both of those are, like, you should look at that as positives. Yeah, they can both be mm -hmm. your support, yeah, honestly. Because exactly. one is like, okay, I'm going to prove you wrong. Mm -hmm. And one is, okay, thank you, I can lean on exactly. you because you believe in me. Mm -hmm. And so we should probably backtrack and talk about what what exactly now that, you know, Mm -hmm. I know you, yeah. and so I know what mm -hmm. your idea was and how I can yeah. see that path happening. But what explain what Soul Track Outdoors is? Yeah, so Soul Track Outdoors is a DC nonprofit that we are trying to create positive experiences outdoors. Um, one of my big things is just re like building community and like, but using the outdoors as a classroom, using the outdoors as a space to challenge yourself, bring people together, learn new things. Um, and so we run. Um, outings every month, things like hiking, climbing, paddling, 
Uh, we do outdoor painting, Zumba, all sorts of things, and just taking advantage of our local green spaces, our parks. And we do that at multiple different levels. So we run programming for adults. We have a college ambassador program where we work with college students. Um, and over the course of the semester, we're doing different outings, but also planning a larger initiative on Howard's campus to engage uh, Howard students in a larger outdoor initiative to just promote people getting outdoors. And we do work independently with like smaller local, like DC public schools with youth, mm -hmm. uh, trying to just teach like different environmental studies and uh, urban sustainability and things like that. But just trying to look at it from a community standpoint, like the uh, like household spectrum, right? Like, yes, I want to engage youth, but also who else can be impacted by this? Like we want to get the parents and the mentors and the older brothers and sisters involved also, because they need, the, the youth need to see the adults also bought in and like wanting to do these things also to like feel like the outdoors is a space for them. Yeah, if you just hit yeah. one angle and there's yeah. no support behind mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. probably going to falter. In terms of getting started, yep. do you, I mean, there's there are lots of hurdles mm -hmm. as anyone who tries to start their own thing yep. knows. Did you feel like self-doubt was ever part of that? Oh yeah, I think that honestly, I will say once a week, I question if I'm doing the right thing. Um, but I think someone had told me once that, you know, um, if you aren't in like, pretty much like if you aren't in a situation where you're questioning like what it is that you're doing, then you might not be doing something that is worth taking like a risk for or something like right, that. Like you're not, you're not aiming yeah. high enough yeah, if you exactly. are scared. Exactly, if you, exactly. And so, <laughs> Um, and I also look at that as part of the work that it is that like when you are doing passion projects, like you're, it's work that you really care about. I think that you get the pros of like being happy in your work and you get the pros of like loving every day, like and being like able to, you know, get up and be, you know, self-satisfied with the work that you're doing. But I think on the opposite end, that's part of the struggle is like, okay, you're going to be uncomfortable and you're going to doubt yourself. And I think what makes the difference in a lot of people is like, who's able to like work through that. And um, I always tell myself like, you know, this is what makes the difference. Like, you know what I'm saying? You have to be able to say like, yeah, like this is fine. Like this is not easy. And no work is ever easy. And I think that people deal with different types of challenges or struggles. And I see my friends that are in like corporate America that are constantly like upset with their work, like doubting themselves. And I'm like, okay, well, this is just my version of that. If that makes sense. It is. Yeah. And also I think that in terms of that whole, like, okay, most people get to a place where they're like, okay, I like my job. Mm -hmm. I, I have a family mm -hmm. maybe, or I live where I want to yep. live. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. And they, so you don't push yep. yourself to go try something new or, yep. or aim for something really big like this. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if, if it wasn't hard, if you, right. there wasn't self-doubt, if it wasn't scary, yeah. terrifying sometimes, yeah. Yeah. then everybody would probably mm -hmm. do this. You know, yeah. that's why people choose exactly. the safer route. Exactly. This is scary. Exactly. But it's mm -hmm. rewarding. Yeah. And do you feel like, outside of self-doubt, do you feel, what are some of the other biggest kind of hurdles or roadblocks you've encountered that you maybe anticipated or, or didn't anticipate? Yeah, so Soul Track is a nonprofit. Um, so... Finances is always a huge um, hurdle. Yeah, a huge hurdle, <laughs> always, block, right? Yeah. Um, and so starting out, just trying to give, you know, my community things that I really think it deserves um, is not free. Like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of the things that we're trying to do isn't free. So that comes with so many different costs that, quite honestly, like, I was like, okay, I'll put, yeah, I'll front a lot of things myself to try and, like, really make this happen. I had a lot of really generous people give and, like, really support it, what it was that I was doing. But on top of that, one of the biggest things that I ran into was that, you know, I can't do this alone, right? Like, I'm not able to run an entire nonprofit on my own. And no, so, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so it took a lot of other people to like really put in a lot of like dedicate a lot of their free time and energy into what it is, my ideas and like what it is that I wanted to do. And um, trying to organize and lead groups of people that you aren't paying, that don't really know what the vision fully is, is very difficult. And 
especially even like young like young leadership, I think is constantly questioned. Um, it's just a variety of different leadership factors that I had to take into consideration and talk to myself like, okay, you got this. Just you know, everyone has a di- has different ways that they'll, they'll, they'll lead right and how they'll come like how they encounter certain situations. And for me, um, it took a lot of me trying to separate myself from what it is that I had seen in leadership prior to where I was right now, um, where, you know, people were being paid in roles. I was being paid to do a job. I was, and like, you see specific leadership in very corporate settings and versus where it was now, it's like, you know, there's a question of quality and like there's a question of dedication, there's a question of loyalty and like th- those things. But also you have to recognize, you know, when you should, you know, put your foot down and like lead aggressively or when you should back off, back off, bring everyone in and understand that this is right now very much and always honestly going to be a, a group push. Like this is a group effort. It's a mo- like it's a, a huge, um, it's a movement, right? It's like multi, like it's all of us involved in this. And no matter where I lie in like the creation of this, like where the vision lies within me, you know, I am not fully in this alone, right? And so understanding that and trying to navigate that as a leader in this was something that was very challenging uh, because it's so fragile. Like people don't have any real reason to attach themselves and stay around if something doesn't go the way that they want or like they don't like this. And so just being in that role for me um, was, it's hard. It's yeah. really hard. And especially because you need these people. You really need the support. You really need the people around. You need the finances. You need Precarious. so Yeah, it's, it's hard. And so um, I would say that has also been a huge learning like moment for me, just like trying to figure out how I can best be a great leader in this position that I'm in, but also keep really great people around that are invested and really believe in Soul Track's mission yeah. and, um, and keep them motivated and give them like, you know, ownership over what it is that we're doing. And I think that I'm doing well. I think that I have it figured out right now and I'm continually trying to grow, but uh, definitely something that you always have to be conscious of. People are like, you know, here to give their time and like are doing really great things for their community, for Soul Track and just being able to, you know, be present, be thankful, but also be directive and be able to lead. Like, you know, I'm going to be the forefront of like what it is the people doing because they're looking for that, but yeah. also wanting to feel like that they are appreciated. You're right. looking around and you're the adult in the room. Like, right. oh, that's right. That's <laughs> right. right. I started this. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> they're and looking so, at me. Like, yeah. So, but um, also if it was, if it was already the norm, mm-hmm. right, then it would be easy. But of right. course, if you, if you felt strongly enough to create this organization, mm-hmm. yeah, to try to get more people out there than mm-hmm. like the the people who you felt like had already been mm-hmm. doing outdoorsy stuff. Right. right. It would have been easy. But because right. it's like, no, we're trying to push yeah. new groups of people mm-hmm. into this. Yeah. It's hard. It's mm-hmm. not gonna just be like, oh, okay. Yeah. Like you say I should do this, let me mm-hmm. do it. Like, exactly. And that was a that was a big thing for me also coming into Soul Track is that, you know, I was very involved in the whole like diversity, equity, inclusion world of um, the outdoor industry and outdoor sports and that conversation it was always happening with you know people of color but it was like we're all already in this we're already involved in this yeah. like how much are we the choir, yeah like, like and how much are we actually bringing new people in right and so that was another thing for me it's just like I know people would question that like you know you're bringing so many inexperienced people like or like, you know what I'm saying like how this is looking bad for the pe- like people who are here just trying to figure this out. And, but for me, it's like that wasn't. That's not. That's what I. Yeah, that's what I. That's not what I care about. You know, I have been in a position where I've like constantly been trying to promote. You know, these lifestyles and like trying to bridge that gap. And that's not going to happen through me having a conversation with audiences that don't look like the group of people that I want to get outside. Or it's also not going to happen through me posting on Instagram or like me posting on Facebook. Like it'll do something. It'll spark something. But it's like, exciting. It's yeah. Like, look what Tyree's yeah. doing. He's on look, the top of a and mountain. It, yeah. Like, and it like, becomes very much like that's what Tyree does. And I realized that. And I was like, okay, how do I actually reach out like and like open the door? Do exactly. And so uh, for me, that has been... It's it's been awesome to like actually feel like I am doing my part now, and um, 
But kind of tying back to that obstacle of like leading, like, you know, there were people that were just willing to give their time who had no prior outdoor experience, but wanted to like, they recognized the issue. Right. Yeah. And so people would question, are these people qualified? Like, should they be able to like volunteer and lead like a hike or like, and it's like, yes, why not? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like these people are no less able to do something like this than you are just because you have formal training. I've been told that I shouldn't do, like, I shouldn't be an executive director of an organization because I don't have the technical, like formal, like education yeah. behind what it is that I should be doing. So just like trying to bend those stereotypes and like these modes that people are trying to create. It's like also just a mental barrier that you always are dealing with because you're like, what are people thinking? Like, yeah, they am I not to... good enough? That's exactly. Just, if you already have self doubt, mm-hmm. that's yeah. just playing into that. And yeah. I think that part of like who who I realized after I went through my list of yeah. who I wanted to talk to yeah. even for this Invigorator series, when I looked at the list, I was like, oh, mm-hmm. it's all people mm-hmm. that in one way or another, like you wouldn't expect to be exactly. in some sort of mm-hmm. like taking charge, being like, no, I'm creating this thing. I'm mm-hmm. making this life happen. But the truth is, and what I, you know, people around me are always trying to remind ourselves is like, but why not me? Mm-hmm. Why not? Why does somebody else right. feel like they're entitled to have this position to go try to do this thing that mm-hmm. they aren't really qualified to do, but they don't feel any mm-hmm. self doubt exactly. or fear in doing it. Exactly. Like, why should I be made to feel mm-hmm. that right. I'm like right. not able to just do that? We're all humans. We're all here. Like, why can't I have any experience I want to have yep. that they can have? Yep. Like, it should be everybody. So yep. it's exciting when you see people because it's like the whole world telling yep. you right. also like, exactly. yeah, no, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. So to see people break out of that and be yep. like, no, I can. I don't care mm-hmm. if you tell me I don't have this education for mm-hmm. this specific right. thing. I can do it. And, and, and quite honestly, the next generation of people and not even that, like other your peers need to yeah. see that because yeah. quite honestly, like that's a lot of that self doubt comes from not being able to look around and see that type of individual thriving or like growing. Yeah. And so you like, okay, well, am I doing something? Like, why is it only me? Like, why is saying, it only me? Or like, you, you know, you tell somebody your idea, and, they and you it. see that yeah. even if they don't verbally question, yeah. even if they are, you can, yeah, you're enough aware. To say, oh, the look in their eyes that changes mm-hmm. and goes. Exactly. Yeah. Like you know, like wow, how gutsy of you! Yeah. It's like really because look at your position. <laughs> right. But like, why are you able to be yeah. there? So yeah. it's, I, I completely understand mm-hmm. that part of it of mm-hmm. like the self doubt that then only is reinforced by the reactions of mm-hmm. sometimes when you tell the wrong person right. who's looking at you like, oh, yeah. okay, mm-hmm. like good luck no. with that. And again, I think that that's that's the nature of the the work. Yeah, but and somebody has to be at the forefront. Exactly. It's so gutsy of you to yeah. be like, I don't and, care how I do it. Yeah, and I don't want to sound like it's easy, but I like you know this has become so regular yeah. to like say, oh yeah, I'm doing this, and people are like, oh that's awesome, that's great, yeah. and it's kind of just like fade off, and it's like okay, and you know starting out it was like I quite oddly enough though when I first started it was a lot easier like because I was. I was personally so motivated and energized. And just like, excited. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I don't care. And right? enough people are and like. And like, <laughs> once it becomes a thing and you, like, are actually in it and people are like, oh, okay, we'll see you. Like, oh, why? Like, people, like, loving it as much as I am now. Like, yeah. you know, it's a thing now. It's happening. And eventually, though, I guess even, for, like, at this point for me, though, it's very much like, okay, that's, you know. That's fine. That's, that's fine. Enough. Because at this point. Just as many of those I've encountered, I've also encountered that people are like, okay, I'm coming, I'm going to show up, I want to be a part of this. And so, you know, it has to balance itself eventually if you put in the work, so. Yeah, yeah, you just have to keep mm-hmm. going forward. Yep. I mean, they always say, yep. like, in doing these things, you'll hear no a lot, you'll yep. hear doubt a lot, mm-hmm. and you keep moving. Once you don't understand what that really means, until yep. you're the mm-hmm. one hearing the yep. doubt or, like, mm-hmm. getting the no's, and you're yep. like, oh, okay, I have to just still keep going. So yep. that's hard. Crazy thing I have the hashtag Ford in my bio. Oh, really? Yep. I don't know why. One day I just like was having one of my like, you know, like mental self talks. And And I was like, you got to keep going forward. It's true. mm -hmm. It's so true because it's really hard. You have to kind of put blinders on and be like, I'm just going to like like not stop, Mm -hmm. which actually works super well with your actual endeavor of climbing and hiking and movement and Mm -hmm. the direction of everything. Exactly. Which had, so Remind me how you, how did you get, you know, speaking of like looking yeah. around and not seeing people that look like you doing yeah. these kinds of things, how did you get into being yeah. so outdoorsy? So, I mean, I, outdoorsy I, is an understatement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, so when I first had started, it was when I was in seventh grade at SC, 
I started as City Kids Wilderness Project, which was a summer camp in Jackson Hole. And quite honestly, that experience exposed me to the outdoors. And it was, um, well, to like, you know, the... Like nature, nature. Yeah, yeah. like the what we would consider the real stuff, right? And yeah. so I had been going out there for multiple summers, year after year, doing all sorts of things, horseback riding, camping. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until I had transitioned out of City Kids, because quite honestly, City Kids was very black it was a, a bunch oh, of kids yeah. from dc who like all flew out like, to my own you know and it's like in the wilderness yeah and out. which was you know an anomaly like it was not we were like living in a bubble almost and yeah. so i had but had grown to love being in wyoming i had grown to love like camping and being outdoors i had grown to love wyoming right my yeah. version of wyoming yeah. and um i had left City Kids to go work for Knowles and like start to really enter the outdoor industry and start to actually go to Wyoming and other places. Solo. Yeah, exactly. By myself. And I had immediately seen a shift in like what all of this actually was, right? And to me it was extremely disappointing. It was very discouraging starting out. Um and again though, I was at this time we're talking, I'm still, you know, 17, 18 years old. And so I had gotten a lot of great opportunities though out of city like that those experiences to you know travel and be outdoors and camp and hike and lead and do all sorts of things. Yeah. And I was not really still in control though of my experiences, what I like to say. Um I was taking any opportunity I could, going to Alaska, oh you got you can do this. And I was loving it, but I wasn't loving it, right? I was like very alone, like I was not I didn't have community anymore. Um, and it was, it was so many great opportunities. I do not regret any of them because it's why I'm here. Um, but once I had started to get older and I was very conscious of my time, my energy, my happiness, like, you know, I was like, you know, am I happy here? Like, do I need to be here right now? And, um, you know, I was spending a lot of time, like a lot of actual time, like, you know, three weeks in the middle of the woods, back country, no cell stuff. We was like, like a bunch of, you know, quite honestly, like older white men. Like yeah. that was like my, started to become my friend groups. And I was yeah. like, because, yeah. yeah. And it's like, I'm like, you know, 19 year old black kid from DC. And it was like, I, but quite honestly, these are the only people primarily who could do this and were doing this. Yeah. And I wasn't happy there. Like, you know, I couldn't, I would like play Drake through my headphones or something. And they're like, why are you listening to that? Did he say this? And it's like, so you're in like a beautiful place doing what yeah, you want to do, but you can't like relax. I can't and enjoy it. Right. Yeah. I couldn't enjoy it. And I would like take, you know, I would, I would be so happy to even just come home to DC and go on a two hour hike with one of my close friends. And it'd be so much better than the past three weeks I just spent in Alaska. Like, you know, and I was just, I had started to like deal with that, Put deal with that, deal with that, you know, and it was like, you know, now I'm 22, 23 years old. And it's like, do I need to take this opportunity? Do I want to take this? It was like very much like I wanted to reclaim my happiness and my time a lot more than I had been. Um, I had dipped the dirty work. I had put in my time. Yeah. I had got these experiences, worked for these people, volunteer here and there. And started to really get to a place where it's like, you know, Tyree, you don't have to do this anymore. Yeah. You can create the space that you want at this point. How do you take back? That's your sick. happiness right and so um that was very much what i how soul track be, it started to like boil around in my head it's like how can you do this and be happy like you know what i'm saying how much happier would you be on the side of this beautiful mountain range if you can look next to you and it's like three or four of your really close friends yeah. versus people who can only make it here right now that like can be able to buy a plane ticket now and say oh let's go yeah um and that's where you know i you know, that's that's how I got to where I am now. I think I was really happy for all my earlier experiences. But as you get older, you know, you're very you're less susceptible to just taking anything. Right. Like yeah. um, and you begin More to get me trying to think of the word. More discerning. Yeah, like, exactly. Just, like, exactly. Yeah, and it's my one life. Mm -hmm, exactly. And I was very much in a place where I it, it was when I was younger. It was like things that I wanted. Like, oh, I would love this. Or, 
But as you get older, it becomes needs. Like I needed this. I do not, I can't not do this without having these things. Like, you know, I was very specific about what it is that I wanted in my life at this point on. Like, and so, um, yeah, it was just, Soul Track became very much of my, like, passion project through what it is that I wanted to create. Yeah, like what it is that I need, but also like what we all need. Because I quickly realized why people weren't doing it based off of how I was feeling there, right? I had grown really attached to being outdoors, but you know, if I hadn't had so many experiences early on that would have kept me there, I would have not been there. And yeah. so how how is that a reflection of my community, right? And so how how can I change that to where if I can create very positive experiences, create community, create love and happiness in the outdoors, how could that, you know, transpire to something much greater, right? And so now I have, I, I was coming back to DC after all those experiences. I've been so many places year after year thinking that I'm doing so much um, for myself, but I was, I'll come back. None of my friends would even want to go hiking. Like none of them climbed, none of them camped before. And it became very, like a huge gap in between like my reality versus my reality, right? Yeah. It was like two different worlds. And so, um, you know, I just wanted to figure out a way to bridge those two genuinely. Like, how can I bring these two worlds together and have people really understand why it is that I'm so interested in this? But like, not too pushy, not like, oh, we need to go out, go to Alaska. That's unrealistic. Why not take advantage of what we have here? Like, yeah. this is what we naturally will be taking advantage of mm -hmm. and like the place that we have accessible to us. And so that's, that's the goal. It's like really trying to, you know, show people that the outdoors is what you it's all relative you know and that's why i was hesitant to say the thing about wyoming being like the outdoors the real outdoors because like you know our local parks you know is what that's that's nature to us you know what i'm saying anacostia park was my outdoor space and i spent so much time there but i've constantly been told by society you know that i don't that's spend time real. outdoors yeah so i grew up thinking that the outdoors isn't for me but yeah. i grew up rolling in dirt grass stains all in my pants yeah every day like and I think people, if we can bring people back to that and understanding that, you know, you don't, like you can be outdoorsy, even if you're going on a hike through Rock Creek Park, like yeah. that's your park, like that's your, Falls, exactly. Awesome. And so, yeah. um, I hope that that is what people can slowly start to build themselves around and like build community around. It's just like, you know, spending time outside, you know, brunch is great. Going out to the clubs is great. I do yeah. it all the time. That's my lifestyle. I live in the city. Yeah. I take advantage of that also, but you know. How can we also like do other things with our time? Or like how can we like how how much fulfilling is it to like meet new people and like come together in such beautiful spaces? Like these are some of the most beautiful areas we have in it. like it's city. True. Like why not be there? It's so. true. Do you feel like what do you feel like have been have you had a moment so far? I mean, I know it's still a new organization, mm -hmm. but have you had like that one small moment where you've been like, Okay, yes, this is working. Like mm -hmm. some you know, some nugget of like yeah, I see this working. So I I really take pride in um, just relationships built um, and just because I I think just from like I was saying my absence of like community and just like feeling like I had people around me was like such a huge reason behind why I wanted to create Soul Track. And so when I see people hanging out outside of Soul Track programming like our time and like coming together and like 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 real relationships being built around yeah. our time outside um and people like going out on hikes on their own and like just seeing what the work that we're doing here kind of transcend beyond like what it is that we're actually doing yeah. um to me it's like this is all I want like you know this is like my version of like what the outcome is for our organization it's like people actually you know like talking to, I live in this huge building, right? Yeah. Every day I get on the elevator every day. I don't know the two people across from me, two people next to me. I saw you try that. I just saw you say hi to like Yeah, I tried and talk. I, and I tried, <laughs> you know, and it, could, and it could be a result of me being from here. And I like the community I grew up was very, I knew my neighbor, I could go in their house, yeah. I could ask for anything I needed. And so, but like you were saying, we had a conversation earlier about like, it's such a transient city yeah. now. People are just only here for moments. They aren't really interested in, Building. Getting to like building relationships and getting to know people, which is 
not this is my home, right? And so I wanted to like create a community in my home because I lived here and I realized how lonely I was here and like how lonely I was when traveling for work. And so like I needed something to come home to, right? And so um that is powerful to me to see people actually wanting that community. And it's just not spaces that is conducive to like encouraging that, right? And so I think it's great to see that Soul Track is giving people who are looking for the same things that I was looking for, like people that they can call and say, hey, let's hang out. Let's go on a hike. Let's go out. Like, let's go to brunch. But it's like these happening in like very natural spaces where people can come together. And so for me, that's so fulfilling just to see that happening because I'm around people that I don't get to talk to at all and they live right next to me. And so, and so sorry. So to just like see that is like really I don't know. It's all I want. It's kind of wild because it's like you you started with outdoors. You yeah. started to then like, okay, how can I create mm-hmm. my space? Mm-hmm. What I want the outdoors to mm-hmm. be. Yeah. And like see more people like me feel mm-hmm. comfortable, mm-hmm. which in and of itself is like yeah. most people don't think that way or, or they think it, but they wouldn't actually mm-hmm. act on it. Yeah. But it's crazy that then yeah. you're also kind of solving mm-hmm. this deeper issue yeah. that I feel like in general. Right. People are more disconnected yeah. now. Everybody's on their phone. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's in their little box. Like exactly. people are communicating mm-hmm. face to face. It's mm-hmm. so much online, and yeah. so to the the secondary yeah. like um, right. you know benefit of this is that you're creating more like intimate personal mm-hmm. interactions and friendships mm-hmm. and relationships is yeah so awesome because it's like even better than just okay yeah. we're getting people outdoors and like getting into nature, understanding that anything mm-hmm. can be nature. Yeah. You know? Um, so that's awesome. Yeah, it's a very, it's, especially with social media. So I think there's a very misconception around like, uh, like network, like what that means and like yeah, what communication friends, is. Your likes, your, yeah. yeah, and just I just being in a city like this, you are connected to so many people through social media, but like you don't actually know them. So even when you like see them in person, you don't know them, and which so crazy. yeah, it's which is like very artificial. It's not like these aren't real relationships that you build with people, and so it is cool to like actually build real relationships that are organic and just feel natural. Like how face to face interactions matter so much more than me reaching out to somebody on the phone, like on Instagram, sort of say and say like, oh hey, like I really like what you're doing, and that interaction is great. Like, and it's a cool way to like make an initial connection, but. What I have noticed is that they are very limiting in like how far they can go until you actually are able to meet people. And I think that, but our phones have like made it so that we don't have to, like, you know, like yeah. we can completely have relationships with people through our phones, but that in, in itself becomes very lonely after a while. Like, and so. And the, na- the nature honestly adds a dynamic to it that you realize is, mm-hmm. I think is necessary yeah. because like, even if you're out to brunch at the club, whatever, yeah. like with people, People still aren't really interacting no, the way no, they do. People are on their phone the whole time, the whole taking time. selfies, whatever. Exactly. Like, if yeah. you're out in nature, especially right. if you can like get somewhere where you don't have cell service, yeah, exactly. And you have to talk. Yeah. You have to be like, oh my gosh, you yeah. see that? What, mm-hmm. Like, yeah. build those little memories. Like, yeah. remember when he yeah. you know, this happened? Like yeah. that. That's how human interaction is supposed exactly. to be, and we've exactly. gotten so far away from yeah. it. So and, like, and I don't want to. And that's what. I, that's exactly what I mean. And for when we do Soul Track, does a lot of hands-on like group or like oriented workshops like throughout our hikes and any of our programming to like force people to interact and like get people together and talk and you know just be present in in the moment but also like you were saying like you know I am very much in a millennial age like I know what that's like but I also am very aware that that is not natural like I don't want to be like this person bash on social media but like there's so many people that I quite honestly follow on social media. We'll see each other out. Don't talk because we don't know each other really. Like yeah. this is an awkward thing. Like I know them, but I don't know them. But like that is a much different circumstance. Like my interaction with people that I've met in person, face to face, we've talked, like we've done, like, you know what I'm saying? Been at an event, anything. Those relationships go a lot further. Like yeah. it's just been what my life experience has been like. And so. I understand the value of actually bringing people in the same space. Like that does so much more. And like, there's so many people, we have a variety of people who like are from here, just moving into DC that are looking for like community or like people who are looking for other people that like hiking. And it's so cool to just see that they they are able to t- take advantage of this opportunity to like meet like-minded people. And so, you know, cause 
quite honestly, they can't meet that through a, through an app. Like yeah. that, that's so hard to do as opposed to like having a, a time and a place where people can come and do that. So, sure. And so since it, I feel like it's mm-hmm. like working pretty well yeah. in TC mm-hmm. really quickly because yeah. it just started in November, <laughs> yeah. 2018. Yeah. So is your, is your ultimate vision to bring it national, international? Do you want it to be like DC focused? Do you have um, like, what's your... We'll see. Like, I think. What's your biggest like dream of dreams? So another thing that I've learned starting Soul Track is like, um, just like find the flow and like just really go with uh, the natural pace that Soul Track takes you. I think that we had got a lot of momentum starting out really early because people were naturally excited. Oh, Tarvis doing this. Yeah. Your, all your friends are really supportive at that yeah, moment, yeah. and we were having huge turnouts. And um, everything was so big, and we were like, my like I have a board of people that were like really ambitious, like oh let's throw this retreat and let's do this, and it was like a lot of like huge ideas that were like coming out of nowhere, and I was like okay let's do this, and you know you were quickly humbled, like okay like maybe we were moving a little too fast because you know we have to get to a place where we see that core group of people who are really invested and like really are here. Like, yeah. you know, not like the people that are just coming to support, which is fine. Like that is very natural. You have to understand these are like natural progressions. Like, um, I think that now I feel like we're at a place where we have a community of people. We have people that are showing up to frequently to programming, frequently to outings, everything that we're doing, fundraisers, everything. Right. And so I, I under, starting to see the identity of like who we are um, in the organization, which is awesome because now I can plan more accurately around like what it is that we're able to do. And um, I think that like now there's more expansive like thoughts around just like programming, like how much bigger can we go in terms of like, you know, extended trips, like, and things like that, which is awesome. Like, and we're like, which requires a lot of planning and logistics. So we're, we're in that bubble now. Like, okay, let's see what that looks like. And in terms of location, um, you know, I think that it would be awesome. Like my, my goal is to try and expand this as far as it can go. Right. Like I am not one of those people that will put myself in a box ever and limit myself. Um, you have to scale organically. Yeah, scale organically. I think that, you know, I'm I'm very confident to say that I think that one day Soul Track will be in many different parts of the US at least. Yeah. At least, right? Yeah. Um, but I want to be very intentional about how that happens. I want to master it here in DC and make sure that we have it solid. Like we have a really strong identity in dc that we can then naturally spread out to other places um because i i'm and i'm also this could be me but i'm also like a freak about like just how things are executed like i love like really solid execution um and especially when my name is on the line Mm -hmm. i've realized that about myself because quite honestly i've been lazy like i've been in roles again like when I'm in like working for larger organizational mm-hmm. companies where I can just be relaxed and like not feel accountable yeah. around any of my work. And that's something I've learned. It's like being the face of an organization, it hold like you are on the line, yeah. right? And so you want everything to look and be done. Listen, you're telling me about this yeah. camera light setup. No, but no, yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. There's a lot of pressure there. Yeah. And I appreciate I mean. that. I appreciate because it, it makes me work and function at a very high level. And I want that for our growth, right? So I want everything to be done when it should be done, and I want it to be done well. And that could be me it just being like this, really like, like it's yeah. But I want it to, because at the end of the day, like I want Soul Track to be showing the best light always. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I think that it will grow. Like to answer your question, I do think that it will expand, and that's my goal. Yeah. But I think with time, I think that we. Still have a lot of growing to do. Like you said, it's a very young organization. And so we have our hiccups. We have our things that don't go well. And it's always continued learning for us. So it's, it's never anything bad. Like yeah. whenever we have something that doesn't go well, I think that our participants and members understand that. Like we're very new um, and they're super flexible around what it is that we're doing. They see the mission. They believe like in what we're doing. And quite honestly, also the administrative and like staff side of things is also like great. Like we learn from that. It's all like we're always 
trying to think around like how that experience is helping us grow. Yeah. Like, and so like, obviously we don't want some of these things happening like three, four years from now, but you know, where we are now is always like, we're always trying to figure out like how we can move forward from what we're doing. Like we're not making a ton of mistakes all the time, but the little things like, oh, okay, cool. That was great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And so that was, that's, I love where we are right now in terms of like that perspective of things, like trying to just lock things down, but be okay. Like we're flexible trying to like, we're, we're okay with not being perfect at the moment. So. And can I, so I have one like technical question mm-hmm. that you mentioned um board members so how did how did you go about do, i mean because so like how old are you I mean, i'm 26 okay. i just turned 26 i started at 25 but. yeah so that's wild mm-hmm. um so as a 25 year old as we already talked about like just the, mm-hmm. the confidence and it's almost like you have to just kind mm-hmm. of fake the confidence until you yeah. have the confidence to to do something yeah. like this how did you go about doing things like getting board members? So quite honestly, so this is interesting because that was one of the hardest things I had to do because oddly enough, you don't feel confident enough to ask the people that you're closest to or like you look up to the most because I think most people understand like it's, it's weird, but like the people that you would think are the closest to you. Not that it's a bad thing, but they're going to question and doubt you the most. Yeah, they're going to ask the last They question. hold you, a, yeah, they hold you the most accountable. So they're like, okay, I need to make sure that you. Yeah. So I initially went to people that knew of my work, like believed it, but were like kind of. Uh, Arms length. Yeah, exactly. And so I went to a guy named Marcus Ware, who was um, who's the chair of the organization, and I had just seen the work that he had done okay. um, from like and the what's outside. His background? Uh, he, it's not mine. no, so he, uh, he has like a, a law background, but right okay. now he is very involved in like, um, higher ed, okay. like he works for GW okay. and at the time specifically, I was looking for collegiate, uh, like to focus a lot of programs around right. college students. And so it seemed like a very natural, mm-hmm. like person to go to. And but you just like researched and, and well, no, we had, we had known each other. Okay. But yeah, I hadn't like, we hadn't no like real personal relationship. Okay. It was a very like professional, like we have been like cross paths to like events and like okay. had like communicated over email and stuff every now and then, but okay. we had not known each other super closely. Personally, okay. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to try and see. Yeah. And it was like very like, okay, like great. This sounds like a great. And I had made sure though. I had like everything checked off. I was like, this is what I want. I this is like, yeah. Too. Cause I mean, again, I, I wanted to be taken seriously. I think yeah. age is a huge thing, right? Like, especially when I'm going to people that are older than me, mm-hmm. it's like, quite honestly, you always are going to like have to take a chip on the shoulder. Like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be looked at. As someone who does not know. Yeah, so I meant to say he's 35. <laughs> <laughs> um, 36. <laughs> uh, and, and I've even been told, though, to lie about my age. Like, wow. like people was like, you should lie. Like, it'll work a lot easier. And I'm like, no, no. that's not what I want to no, do. No, if I want to go in with this solid, <laughs> right. I can't start with right. a lie. Yeah. yeah. So um, I went to him. And then, so I started with, I, I have three board members. And so my goal was, another thing is I didn't want to reach too high, not to like offend any of my current women, but I wanted people that like had time that were accessible yeah. that could really be a part of the growth of the organization. Yeah. Like that can really you don't be to, like Obama. Yeah, like, right, exactly. Like I could the there's like people that I'm like, okay, you're the executive director, yeah. you're the CEO of this, like I know of you or like I have this relationship with you. I would yeah. love for you. It's like quite honestly you don't have the time. Like yeah. you don't want this time. So um I just sought out people that I felt like were really hands-on and like involved yeah. in a lot of, not too much. And I tried to gauge like who has a lot of going on and who doesn't. And, um, but I think like we were saying, just like, it was one thing to present an idea to people and like, oh, I want to do this. And then it was another thing with like my prospective board members to say, hey, I would love for you to be a part of this. And I would love for you to take on leadership here. And, yeah. um, I think that, though, for me, was very motivating um, yeah. because I had then attached people to this idea and attached people to what yeah, it is. So that's yeah. exactly. And I, I had honestly, I had taken two weeks when I had planned meetings with them. I was like, 
okay, can we meet? Like, and it was like kind of far out. And I was like, in those two weeks, I'm going to figure everything out. But also, once you do this, and this was like me, like, once you do this, you're in it. Like, right. Exactly. And so, um, and once I had done it, I had the conversations. We had our first meetings and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, this is happening. And so, but it was, those, those were like the hardest, some of the hardest conversations was just like sitting people down. Um, and just really trying to sell it the way that I really, like, this was my first time really pitching this idea yeah. and like to really get people bought in, um, was hard. It was, it was not hard. Like all of the conversations were really smoothly. I had one board member that was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this, which is fair. Like we still have like a great relationship, yeah. but, um, it was also like a very real moment, right? It was yeah. a very real, like, okay, this like, Tyree, you're not going to get everything you want. Like, this isn't, like, everyone isn't going to follow behind you. Everyone isn't going to see it initially. Like, because it was a new idea. Now, But don't you feel so proud after those moments? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I just did that. Like, I just asked to have board members of my idea. Like, that's that's Yeah, it's like one of those things where, like, if you have stage fright and you have a big performance and you get up and you, regardless of how you did when you walk off the stage and you feel like you did what you needed to do, it's a rush. you're like, Ooh, that was, I did this. And so it was, it's very fulfilling for me to like, kind of back to where I originally started is like to push myself yeah. and really ch- like feel challenged because even in my like active physical life, I thrive in situations where I take risks and like push myself yeah. and need to feel like, I need to feel like I am uncomfortable. And I even, used to really try and push that to my peers at work, like whether it was like racial topics and things like we need to be uncomfortable to grow. Right. And so um, I, you know, I just I I really appreciate just moments where any way that I, I, no one likes it in the moment. Like I don't like it ever when I'm like, oh, I have this huge meeting or I have this huge conversation or I need to like ask someone for something yeah. like it's, it sucks to be in that mm-hmm. moment. But there's no greater feeling, though, to come out of it. And yeah. you're like, I did it. Like, it was fine. I worked through it. You're capable, right? And so those are the moments that I really look forward to, like, look forward to as a person. There's a lot more of that as someone personally who's also started my own thing. Mm-hmm. Different, but mm-hmm. similarities that, like, I didn't realize how much creating your own thing is, like, this series. It's not even a series of highs and lows. It's a series of, like, fear Mm-hmm. And like a pride rush yeah. and fear and a yeah. pride rush. Like constantly. it's just, it's constantly like, that's the emotion. Mm-hmm. It's much more um, like tense pressure yeah. that way than like these ups and yeah. downs that somebody else is creating for yeah. you. Like suddenly you're pushing, you're mm-hmm. being like, I have right. this huge challenge. I'm going to face it. Mm-hmm. It's hard, but I did it. So now I'm proud. Like it's, yeah. it's mm-hmm. super rewarding yeah. and terrifying mm-hmm. all the time. Do you have two questions more do you have like a certain person that you feel like is your biggest kind of supporter or like um uh, i have two really good support like I, different types of support mm-hmm. so marlo is one of uh he's actually a board member oh mm-hmm. and part of the reason why i think that he's such a great fit is because he's like the epitome of like uh, secondhand and everything like uh, super reliable, super dependable uh, has really bought into like what it is that we're trying to accomplish as an organization and has dedicated himself to a lot of the work that we're doing, whether it's running to pick up, I don't know, cups or whatever yeah. it is, like would we'll do it in a heartbeat for the organization for the sake of like what it is that we're trying to accomplish. So huge, huge help, like just around the board. And then yeah. Um, I have like um, Warren C is a huge uh, just general overall like support financially and like so many other ways that we would not be able to like but even to where like he'll help cook brunches like you know yeah. and so it's like I have and I don't want to like if anyone sees this, like there's so many people like if anyone sees this, yeah, somebody like, better see this yeah like, <laughs> like, like so track folks like I think everyone loves you all yeah I, I love everyone because again it's all volunteer based yeah so like it is very much of a community effort um but you know I, with that being said I do take notice in like people that have gone far far beyond like yeah, for and like for someone like for me 
that have like created us to see people like I've witnessed like literally give so much, like so much more than I can have imagined. Uh, I'm just like extremely grateful for it. That's awesome. And um, as a like a personal support for yourself, do you have any kind of like motto or mantra, like something that you just kind of keep repeating to yourself or reminding yourself to get you through those moments where it's a struggle or there's self doubt or somebody's you know scoffed at you or mm-hmm. um, or just every day to like get up and tell yourself. Let me see. I will say that I don't know if it's like a motto. But I would think of it more as like a mentality. And that mentality for me is very much of like, one that I I try and recognize that I'm blessed. Like, I really just try and think that, you know, whether it's the universe or something has like really been in favor for me to um, be able to share something that's so passionate that so many others desire to have. And so... I don't, I try not to take that for granted. So I don't know if it's exact words to describe that, but I am aware of a position that I'm in to give, right? And so I want to put my full effort in to like make, live through, live true to that, right? And so I want, so that that's just how, what I live through, you know? It's like gratitude. Yeah, I'm grateful for, yeah, I'm grateful for the like, what it is that I have been given. Like so many people have given me so much since I've been a kid. And I am able to now turn that into something that I can then put out to like so many people that I truly didn't think deserve it as well. And so that's kind of my, a lot of my motivation whenever things get really tough is like, okay, like this, this is really hard, but it, it's working and it's working because so many people need it. So mm. that's awesome. Mm. Um, do you have anything else you, you just want to kind of get off your chest about Soul Tracks outdoors that you feel like yep. we didn't touch upon? Um, if you're in DC <laughs> and you like been outside, you love meeting really great people, um, especially like people of color who are looking for community safe spaces to like really take risks, try new things, get outside. Um, it is a great community of people that are waiting to have you, and so please come out and join us. All right, that's it. Thank you so mm-hmm. much for being. Uh, Palm Vita Invigorator mm-hmm. and for inspiring I mean you inspired me which is why I asked you to do this but I guarantee that people watching this are going to be inspired and hopefully there will be somebody else who's in a you know stable comfortable position but will feel that little spark to mm-hmm. hopefully challenge themselves yeah. and get uncomfortable and create something big because that's how you really change yeah. the world mm-hmm. and get exciting and, and live yeah. a more fulfilled life so. yeah. if you're unhappy Get happy. It's like one of my things also. It's like I do not thrive when I'm not in a happy place. No, yeah, you gotta make it happen. Mm-hmm. Doing so many things outdoors. Mm-hmm. Do you do you find yourself? I mean, this is obviously like a little Palm Vita insert here, yeah. but as far as self care, and not just self care, like you know, yes, I go to brunch, right? Mm-hmm. You know, meditate, right. but actual physical self care yeah. also. Mm-hmm. Do you focus it all on? Things like that. I'm making sure that what you're putting on your body is yeah. is not harmful, and that you're putting sunscreen on and things like that when you're outdoors. Yeah. So, you, see <laughs> you look like you take care of it. No, um, so I definitely use sunscreen. Okay. Um, so in terms of like actual um, like products, like what's in the products, I don't really have a huge bag. So I know I do not pay a ton of attention to those things. Um. I do though use natural deodorant because I have like really sensitive skin okay. um, there, so it Good. hurts. So I have like used natural products there. Good. Okay, that's super um, important because the aluminum is not good for you. Yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of self care, I have like I've had like such a struggle dealing with ingrown hairs in my uh-huh. face. So now I, it's this is a lot better than it's ever been, and just within the past like two or three months. Okay. I've like really put a lot of attention into like trying to like just be more intentive. Mindful. Yeah, mindful of my face. And it's been really great. I've like I have like a maybe twenty minute face routine every morning. Listen, it helps with your confidence, <laughs> yeah, right? No, to feel does. like okay. Especially my face. I'm Glowing, like I can't walk yeah. around and just like feel yeah. confident. It's like all these skin girl hairs on the side of my face. That's awesome. So I brought um I brought one main like product and brand that I wanted to show you because especially sunscreen and I feel like it needs to be talked about that 
that people need to be reminded that everybody should be wearing sunscreen, like mm -hmm. no matter your skin color, right. no matter your skin tone, yes, like it doesn't matter. You can still get skin cancer. You yes. can still like absolutely mm -hmm. have your body. Black people from that. can get sunburn. Thank I you. get sunburn all the time. Thank you. <laughs> Which means you can get skin cancer. Right. So, right. um, so these days, I don't know how much you know about like the fact that we really should not be using the chemical sunscreens, even if, you know, there are a few people who don't believe in, mm -hmm in using products with better ingredients in them and think that that's just all like crazy talk. But even if you don't believe in that, the truth is that the chemical ones also harm the ocean reefs. Mm -hmm. So especially if you're like working yeah. in the outdoors, yeah. if you care about nature, if that's your focus, like we need to be taking yeah. better care of this entire planet mm -hmm. desperately. So this is Tropic Sport. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Tropic Sport is one of my favorite sunscreens. They are not only like completely clean mm -hmm. and they are only using you know zinc as the to block out the sun and not chemicals so they're not harming us mm -hmm. they're also not harming the reefs they do work to kind of help change laws so that you can't use chemical sunscreens in places like florida where everybody's at the beach because it's mm -hmm. killing the coral reefs which is you know ultimately going to hurt all of us so um but this is my favorite one and i thought it was perfect to show you mm -hmm. and hopefully um I can get you one once we have our inventory, but it's, it's basically like you put it on. So it comes just on this clip. This yeah. is my husband. So he keeps on in his wallet. Yeah. So you can put any clasp on it or on your keychain, and then it just flips open. You're going to put some on yeah. you can do your arm if you want instead of your face. Mm -hmm. So let's see how it rubs in. Okay, like show this. the camera. Look at that. Look how much that just rubbed in. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can show you on my skin too, but I Again, feel like yours is more. Again, especially dark. Yeah. This is really important as well, because you don't want to walk around with our camera. <laughs> 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 so yeah, it rubs in on me also, but um, mm -hmm. super well. But and it is has a good smell, so it doesn't smell crazy. Yeah. It rubs in. It's not greasy. But honestly, my favorite like thing that sets it apart. One of my favorite things is this because if you just have this I was with say, you, I, I, I you was can't gonna, forget it at home. Yeah, I was going to add that I like that it's portable because, like I said, I get sunburned yeah. so often, but I use sunscreen, but it wears like throughout the yeah. day. And so if it's like something that you can like carry around and it's so accessible, you'll use it a lot. And it's like handy. It's like really small. And it's this is also, they're like surfer focused. So they actually have it that it's at... Um, for 80 minutes, it's water resistant, but you can wear it if you're not in the water for, I believe, 240 minutes. I mean, it's like crazy long, but you should still reapply. Mm -hmm. And this is also, even though this is plastic because sunscreen actually has to be in plastic to not go mm -hmm. bad, like the healthy ones, but you can take this off and you can buy a big pump of the same sunscreen and just fill it up mm -hmm. so that you can just keep this yep. one and, uh, and fill it up and just keep it on you because there's so many times where you're out and you realize you're out much longer than you anticipated mm -hmm. and you can reapply or you can put it on for the first time. So I feel like this is the perfect thing yes. for, um, maybe we'll have to do some like collaboration yeah. with yeah. Soul Trek oh, and, and Poppy to and do like travel. So, and then this is their lip one, um, which, I won't make you use, but it's SPF 15 and it also goes on just as clear. So those are, I feel like people forget about doing their lips mm -hmm. and people forget to just bring sunscreen yeah. with them. So to have it portable well, like that really is super great, especially for the outdoor life. Yeah. Or... That will go right on the side of my back. Right. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you so much yeah. for coming. Mm -hmm. And thank you for watching Tyree with Soul Trek Outdoors. And I hope that you go check out his organization and keep watching our other invigorators so that you can uh, be excited to make your life as fulfilled as possible. Bye.